Hello folks and welcome to another video. Flash photography with an umbrella? What's that all about? So let me explain. So many 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 years ago back in the days when I used to shoot film I used to do a lot of sort of portraits and uh, sort of still lifes and things like that but I always used to use a uh, flash gun and uh, a shoot through umbrella so uh, as I said that was many many years ago and uh, I haven't done it uh, certainly haven't used uh, any of that setup since uh, I've been shooting digital so I've got uh, maybe a couple of photo projects or you say YouTube photo projects that uh, I'd like to try and um, I'm going to try and use the uh, flash uh, setup with the umbrella to uh, see if it'll work and I suppose see if I can remember actually what to do. So in this video, this is going to be the sort of perhaps the first of maybe two or three, but in this one I want to uh, show you uh, the equipment that I'm going to be using and then maybe talk about a little bit about the setup. So uh, first of all, let me uh, show you what we're going to be using in, uh, in this uh, little set of videos that hopefully I'm going to be doing. So the first thing we're going to be using is this. So this, I can get it in the frame. So this is just a, a white uh, bounce or a shoot through umbrella. Uh, now this hasn't seen the um, light of day since... 20 years, I suppose, it's been sat up in the, in the loft for a good few years. Uh, yellowing in a few uh, places, guys, but that's the uh, shoot-through umbrella, or bounce umbrella. This on the end is just a, a, a solid lump, just to sort of counterbalance it. So that's uh, the first thing we're going to be using. Now bear in mind, guys, this is probably 30 years old. So that's the uh, umbrella, just put that down there. Right, so the next thing we're going to be using is this. So this is, uh, let me see guys, this is a Photax uh, Interfit lighting stand. Again, I've had this about 30 years and that's been sat up in the loft. So I don't know why you see, but basically it's just a, almost like a tripod guys, you just extend these. Oh, that's a bit rough. But you just extend the, the tubes out to the height you want and these legs sort of open up uh, to sort of mount it to stand it on the floor. But again, guys, I'll show you the actual setup. So that's the, uh, the actual stand. Again, that's been sat up in the loft for a good 20 years. Now, the next thing we're going to uh, see, or well, next thing we're going to be using is this. So let me just come forward a bit. So basically, what this is, this is just a, um, well it's a cold shoe on the top, I don't know well you're going to be able to see that guys, but it's a cold shoe on top there, uh, and a hole through here, and that's where the actual um, um, umbrella goes through, then you can clamp it on with that, I'll give you a better picture of that uh, a bit later on guys, but that's and then that end there, that little hole there, that just sits on top, pushes on top of the lighting stand and then you clamp that up. So that goes on top of the lighting stand and then you just slide your uh, flash gun on top of there. So that's the, that's sort of the third part of the setup. Now the next thing is this. Again, we're gonna show you these uh, perhaps a bit closer up in a moment, guys. So this is, my uh, aging Vivitar uh, 283 uh, flash gun. Again, this thing's got to be uh, 30 years old at least. So it's just got a, a bounce head. Uh, so that's the flash gun. Um, now it's got a, it's an auto and a manual flash gun, but we'll get to that in a moment, guys. So it's a sort of Vivitar 283. Now I believe can't remember guys, it's a long time since uh, I've used that. Oh, I lost the sun a bit in here. But uh, 
It's a long time since I used that, guys. Now, I believe the guide number is about, I think it was kind of, it was 35, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, when I find out, I'll flash it up on the screen, but I'm sure it's a guide number of 35 in metres. And the next thing, and the last thing is this, which is a uh, sink cable. So again, I'll show you a bit closer to these up uh, in a moment, guys. But this will um, sit on top of the the camera with a sort of a hot shoe there, so that'll trigger it through there. And that end will actually plug into the the flash gun. So that's the uh, the sort of main lighting uh, part. Now, bear in mind, guys, them bits are. Uh, 30 years old and probably older. Uh, the flash gun is that is, uh, I have done the because you've got to be careful with these cameras, modern cameras, because of the trigger voltage. So I have done a test and checked the trigger voltage on the uh, flash gun, and uh, that's okay with the Canon camera that I'm filming now. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a link up to that little test. But the trigger voltage on that, I think, was about 10 volts, which I think is okay for Canon. I have actually, I did test to see if the flash gun would fire. And uh, yeah, it did, so the camera's still working. <laughs> uh, I know Nikons are a little bit more um, selective on their trigger voltage, so I probably won't be using that flash gun on the uh, Nikon cameras. So that's why we're sticking with the Canon. So that's the setup, guys. So what we do is, I want to show you a bit more in depth uh, of the flash gun. And uh, oh, one other thing I forgot, nothing important, but it's a cheat sheet. I got a cheat sheet there, because uh, I'll explain that in a minute, but uh, I got a cheat sheet for all the uh, settings. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to um, set up and uh, use my overhead tripod as the uh, ideal opportunity to uh, use my new newer tripod that I can do some overhead shots so if you just bear with me guys that'll probably take me half an hour to set up but I will see you momentarily. So let's take a quick overview of the Vivitar 283 flash gun. So guys so I suppose what is that just a normal uh, camp top uh, flash gun so uh, it's an auto uh, manual so it has a, a, a a full manual setting which just gives you a full powered flash every single time and then it has four auto settings but uh, we'll uh, get into those in a moment guys and we have a bit of a closer look so this is the the front face or the front part of the flash gun so uh, that there is the uh, auto thyristor so that's what actually shuts off the the power to the uh, flash gun when enough light has reached your subject. But again, as I said, we'll have a quick, uh, a better, closer look at that, I should say, guys. So, I'll just spin it around, guys. So that's uh, the side view. So there is a your sort of calculator dial. So you can turn that. I don't know why that's going to show up, guys, but uh, you can sort of turn that to... Uh, and it basically just a calculator dial gives you your f-stops, uh, film speeds, etc, uh, etc, et and you just match up your distance with your f-stops and your film speed to give you your, your auto range, and you can also use it to uh, calculate your uh, manual distances as well, so that's the side, this is the back, so again it's, it's a no frills flash gun of a sort of 30 year vintage, so what we have here is uh, on and off, there's no batteries in it, it does take a long time to uh, uh, cycle and charge up, uh, but that's your on and off. That's your test, and that flash, that light there. As I say, we'll have a closer look. But that flashes uh, when it's fully charged, and it also will do your test shot. That little button there lights up your scale there, and that tells you when you're lights up when you get the correct amount of flash you know to, the flash has uh, done its thing as it were guys uh, battery compartment on the side there just four double a's but it actually has a little cassette so you put your battery in so you have several of these and you just uh, put them in and out no that is the right one right, that's the right one 
there is only one way that goes in and I built it the wrong way. <laughs> Let's try that way. That's it, there you go. Uh, it will take um, external power, but you've got to use uh, Vivitar's own um, man, uh, power brick, which you probably can't get anymore. And that there is, uh, remember the old little sockets that you used to have on your side of your film cameras to fire the flash gun if you didn't have a hot shoe? Well, that's what that does. So that's really the flash gun, guys. It's a, a no frills, 30 year vintage flash gun. So I'll put out the one side over there. So we'll just have a closer look at this, guys. So that is your um, mount to go on to the, uh, uh, what should we say, the, the flash stroke umbrella uh, stand. So that hole there, guys, that uh, is what uh, the umbrella goes through and then you just lock it up. That's your cold shoe, so the flash gun sits onto that and then underneath that just drops into your uh, pole or post on your um, lighting stand and then just clamp it on with that guys. So that's the that's the uh, lighting stand clip. Now this is the last thing guys that we'll have a quick little talk about with this one. So this is I suppose you'd be calling it the sink cable. So uh, this would go into there. So let me just, so I'll just give a quick demo before we go deeply into this. So that comes off. So if you can imagine guys, so we'll show you a closer bit. That goes into there. And then this one goes, I'll line it up with the little locator. Wherever that is, there it is there. I hope you can see this guys, because I'm fiddling here. Right. So in a, if you can imagine guys, so this part would be pointing towards your subject. So that would be reading the light and the flash gun then can then point anywhere. So the flash gun can point anywhere, but this was what reads the light, so it re reads the reflective light so you can bounce the flash gun around and about guys. So uh, that's what that's for. Um, you are limited to where you can put it because of the length of the this actual cable. But uh, anyway, guys, let's uh, we're going to take a co uh, closer look at the flash gun, guys. So, guys, here we are. A sort of a closer look at the, the probably the most important part for this uh, video, which is uh, this, or should I say, the most important part of the uh, photography side of this video, which is this. So, this is an what they call an auto thyristor. So it's difficult to explain, and I don't really know how to explain it properly, but it's, it's, I suppose, a switch with a light sensitive sat. So guys, this is the little uh, auto thyristor, can't even say it, thyristor, uh, if the camera focuses on it. Let's see if it'll focus on it. Oh yeah, it will do. Surprising enough. So that's an auto thyristor, guys. So basically, it's, it's a switch but let's say it's a light activated switch. I don't know if that props the best way to describe it, but that's a, it's a light activated switch. And you have sort of four auto settings and a manual, and they're dictated by this color. So when you, so we start off with manual. So when you're in manual, with the M in there, guys, when you're in manual, so what it actually does, it basically blocks this little light sensitive thing. So the, this, this, I suppose you can manage like putting a um, ND filter over your lens, I suppose. So it will actually, I've got to stay in the middle of the picture. So it will actually block any light going into the, the uh, sensor, the switch, if you like. So that's in manual. And then by turning this, so you have four settings. So you have a yellow. Now you won't see that in there, but that actually changes that window in there. I suppose it'd be like putting sunglasses or like I said guys an ND filter on your camera. So you have your yellow, red, again that changes the that sort of little window in there guys. So you have four auto settings yeah and one manual. Now with the four auto settings you can actually have 
it will work uh, with different ranges, um, your ISO, and uh, so you have di distances, I should say, your, your, your ISO, and shutter speed, apertures, etc, etc, etc. So, if I just put that back in there, I don't lose it. So, this is where the cheat sheet comes in, guys. So, it's a little, I don't want to say complicated, because it's not, but it's about, um, you, you, you have to balance your, um, your, your film speed, your aperture, and your shutter speed, or, and your distance, to uh, what you would like to um, achieve, if you like. So as just so now, I've always used this in auto because I, that's in days of films, guys. I've always used it in auto because I will seem to have got the best result. So guys, let's consult the cheat sheet, shall we? It'll probably be easier to explain. So this is basically all your automatic settings and uh, your ranges. So. If we were, so let's say we wanted, so it's about balancing your aperture against your uh, ASA and your distances, if you like. So let's say that we wanted to use, now we're not going to go down to um, ASA 25, because I don't think my uh, M50 goes down that low. So let us suggest then that we're going to use, um, so our lowest ASA on the M50 is probably 100. Yeah, we can, I, don't, I mean the M50 might, I don't, I think it goes down to uh, 100, it might go down lower, but let's say we're going to stay with ASA 100. So in the yellow, we're going to use the yellow setting, that's going to give us an aperture of 2.8, and our subject distance, automatic range, will be between 5 and 43 feet. So what you can see, guys, is you, you have to sort of balance your, 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 your distance from your subject and the IS, the ASA you want to use and your aperture. Now also bear in mind that these distances are if you were using um, direct flash. Now if you're not using direct flash, obviously your distances may not be perfectly um, should they marry it up because obviously you know bouncing but the beauty of that is because it gives you a between say 5 and 43 feet you can it will probably work and to be fair I've never had any issues back in the film day when we were using this uh, flash gun with these sort of settings guys so for this for what i'm trying to achieve with this little video i'm going to be doing or photo video later is i'm going to have to work out distances so i mean if i'm working at a distance of, of uh, you know i might so I'm, i might have to go the other way because i might have to look at my distance and then work out the settings up here if you like so if i wanted to do between say my distance is between 2 and 11 foot then you would have to try and work out well. Now, all right, so I'm going to be between. So the autos range between two and eleven foot is the purple mode. So if I wanted to use the purple mode ASA 100, I'm going to have to use F11. Well, for what I'm going to be using, that may not actually work, guys, because if I'm doing with say portraits, I might want the background to be blurred. So it's all about trying to sit, well, you know, choosing my aperture so again because the um, M50 probably doesn't go below 100 ASA I might be wrong I'm sure somebody will correct me on that if I, but if I wanted to use so I might if I want to use a widest aperture I can at 100 ASA that that's a 2.8 which is the yellow so I'm going to have to go between 5 and 43 foot so that's going to be the problem with this setup guys is it's you know my subject distance i can probably move the flash gun in and out to sort of change its um if you like light intensity but that's the problem and that's going to be the sort of uh, the setup i'm going to be using uh, or attempting to use so going back to what i was uh, saying guys so that's where you you would take off the um the sensor off the the flash gun that 
So the sensor points towards your subject, but the flash gun will be firing into an umbrella. So that's going to be my uh, setup. And what I'm going to be doing is what I'll do, guys, uh, in a moment I will show you the setup. Um, and we'll have a, have a quick sort of a chat about that. But uh, this is going to be very much, shall we say, uh, a hit and miss um, <laughs> Video. Now the beauty is, I suppose with digital we can say, is that uh, back in the film, or back in the film days, you basically chose your settings, you, you took your photographs and then you waited a couple of weeks um, for your results to come back and you hoped that uh, you, say you, you uh, chose the right settings, but at least with uh, the digital, uh, if I can get the aperture and shutter speeds etc 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 all pretty close I can probably tweak the exposure uh, in the uh, editing software anyway guys that's the sort of uh, this is that's the bare bones of the, the setup so what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to uh, if I've got room where I am in the conservatory is actually try and set up the the lighting stand so you can see everything to what it's going to look like guys so if you just bear with me one moment so guys, this is the setup. So as you can see, the uh, brolly's over there and the camera's sort of down here, guys. So the idea being that uh, we're going to be photographing something down here somewhere on my table. So uh, as you can see, guys, the sensor's on top of the camera. So it's, I'm trying to be as steady as I can, but the sensor's on top of the camera. Uh, forget the road uh, wireless go that's doing nothing at the moment but that's the sensor on top of the camera guys so that's going to read the the reflective light that uh, bounces back off of the subject and here's the the actual flash setup itself guys as I said it's going to be a little bit wobbly but that's the flash gun firing in into the the umbrella so as I say guys, the problem with this as a shoot through umbrella is the, uh, the this cable. So this is going to be the problem. I will show you that in a moment guys, but uh, that's the setup. So it's going to be a little bit wobbly, but that's the setup guys. So the camera's going to be pointing obviously at the subject. Let me sort of move around a bit. Now what I can do on this side, I'll just slick it around, there's a window sort of here hopefully as any shadows that's created on this side of the um, photograph it can be filled in uh, hopefully the window light will stop any shadows or if I could actually if I was to stand where I'm standing now with a, a uh, you know some sort of reflective uh, board or something like that then any light coming get the light from that side and reflected back on the side that I am around here but that's the sort of setup, guys. As I said it's not uh, perfect, but that's the lighting uh, setup as it is. Oh, look at the stuff off a conservatory roof. Karen, I'll have to get up and keep that clean. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's the that's the setup. That's the camera on my new uh, newer tripod. I mean, obviously, it's all got to be adjusted and messed around with to get the right height. But that's the uh, that's the setup, guys. And let me just. Uh, show you what I mean if I was to use it as a shoot through umbrella so guys it's now set up as if you're using it as a, a shoot through umbrella and the problem is this that's the sensor cable now because it's actually got to come round from inside of the um, umbrella that's now limiting my movement yes yeah, so that, so now it will be shooting through which would probably work with no problem but it's this this cable here because it's now got to come through and go round I stand on my cat's toys there so that's got to come round here so now I'm, I'm very restricted where I can put the the umbrella because of the edge of the umbrella is going to restrict the position of this because this is only I can't remember maybe a meter I'm not sure but I might be able to use it in that configuration when I do the video. I will try it and see, but uh, I think the limit is going to be where that cable is. Anyway guys, that's the setup, so uh, 
Uh, I'm going to sort of move everything away and we'll have a quick uh, closing chat. So folks, that was the sort of setup I'm intending to use. As I said, it's a uh, 30-year-old equipment I'm trying to talk to a very modern DSLR up there, guys. But uh, I'm going to give it a try. Um, I've got a couple of little projects that uh, I want to use, um, some perhaps use it for still life and uh, maybe some portraits, but uh, some unusual portraits, shall we say. I might even try and do a self-portrait. You know, look at my ugly mug, all oh, lovely lit with some subdued light <laughs> through the umbrella. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So, that's the set. As I said, I've got a couple of uh, little um, YouTube video photo uh, things that I want to uh, do. Um, but uh, at the minute, guys, uh, I'm going to go off target here, a bit subject. We've had some heavy rain here where I am in the UK, and uh, and the motorbikes are out now as well. It's not far from us, there's uh, some waste ground, and uh, the motorbikes get over there. I hope that is not distracting the video too much, guys. But uh, anyway, I'm waffling a bit here. So that's the setup. As I said, it's going to be some very old equipment, trying to talk to some modern. Uh, photographic equipment. Uh, I've got, as I said, a few little projects that I want to do with it. So, uh, but what I am going to do before I actually shoot the video of the the, um, the photos, if you like, I'm going to do quite a bit of experimenting uh, with the setup because uh, until I'm actually uh, satisfied that it's going to work, I don't want to sort of be making a video then it will go um, horribly wrong. Uh, and, I, and the first thing I've got to do uh, is um, try and figure out what flash gun settings are going to be on the M50. So, if uh, my friend uh, Stephen from uh, Swanage, uh, he's a Swanage photographer, and he's got an M50. I think he's got an M50 Mark II actually, but anyway, he's got an M50. So Steve, if you're watching this video, what do you know about the flash settings on the M50? Because I haven't got a clue. <laughs> So, uh, yes, I'm going to have to dive into the flash settings, all the external flash settings, there's quite a few, uh, but uh, as I said, I know nothing about the external flash settings on the M50, so that's going to be a bit of a learning curve. But that's the setup, guys, that's what I'm going to be using, this lovely umbrella, I said it's uh, quite old, I'm beginning to discolour a bit, but hopefully it'll do the job, um, hopefully the flash gun's going to work. Um, I said it, the flask can take us such a long time to recycle, but hopefully in auto, because you're getting bounce flash, it's going to be recycling quite quickly. Anyway, I'm waffling on here, guys, so that's the setup. Um, I'm now going to uh, attempt to. Um, I've got to work out a background now, guys, so in, in front of where you're sat, I'm going to have to have some sort of background across here, because obviously I'm going to be shooting this way, so that's the next thing. Anyway, as I said guys, I'm waffling on, I'm going to have to uh, have a little bit of a play with the setup and uh, see how it works. So, there you go guys, that's a uh, quick overview, it's not that quick actually is it, but that's a quick overview of the uh, shoot through, bounce umbrella, stand etc etc that I'm going to be using for uh, a little photo project. So there you go guys, uh, hope you found this one interesting and uh, enjoyed the video and we will catch you all, hopefully, when I'm actually about to take some photographs. Or, maybe not. Anyway, guys, <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one. So thanks for watching this one, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye for now.